Welcome everyone uh, to today's teaching, which is a short one concerning the Word of God itself. And the purpose of this teaching is just to remind us of the priority and primacy that the Word of God needs to have in our life and, if, and the fact that we need to be rooted and grounded in the Word of God, which has been given to us so that we can have an anchor to our walk as Christians and as believers. So the first scripture that I'll read out is John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So the Word has always existed. The Word is Jesus, and the Word cannot change. Matthew 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So, not only has the Word existed from the very beginning, but the Word of God will persist forever throughout all eternity. Next scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So let's examine this scripture. It is saying all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So all the scripture basically is written by God through man. Man has heard from God and recorded it, and there it is in the Bible. And it says it's profitable for doctrine i.e. profitable for teaching and for us to learn from it. That is the very purpose of the Word of God. And it is also for a proof and correction, so as to guide us and bring us in, onto our correct path and to keep us on our correct path. For instruction in righteousness, this, these scriptures say, so to help us to live righteously. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, so when we understand enough of the Word of God, we can do good works, good things for our wonderful God. Next scripture, Isaiah 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So the Word of God has authority and effectiveness. Psalm 138, verse 2. I will worship, says King David, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Now we know from the book of Psalms, from the life story of King David, that he sought the truth of God. King David says here, Thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So God not only provides us with his word, but he has emphasized that his word is more important than his name, because his word tells us who he is. It reveals him to us, and it reveals his laws, his commandments, and his truth to us. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divide, dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the word of God essentially can get us sorted out. It will show us what is our soulish nature and that which is, should be our spiritual nature. So it is quick, powerful and sharp than any two-edged sword. It will divide. And so that helps us to progress spiritually and not walk in the old man of the flesh. Jeremiah 23 verse 29. 
Jeremiah, the prophet speaking, Is not my word like as a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? God's word is powerful and strong. Proverbs 3, verses 1 to 4. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. So this is a real instruction for God, isn't it, in Proverbs? Proverbs is full of wisdom for us. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Our heart is who we truly are. Our mind is simply a tool, but it says here, let thine heart keep my commandments. So it's whether we have the heart to really persist in doing God's will throughout our life. And it continues. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. So when we obey God consistently and persistently, we will walk in deeper, greater peace, and we can even have a longer life. And it continues. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them around thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. I'll just stop there. Some scriptures, to me, are like poetry. They, to me, they capture my imagination. I find them so beautiful. Let me just read those two lines to you again. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. To me, that is the most beautiful imagery. And it continues. So shalt thou find favour and good understanding in the sight of God and man. So, if we want to stand well with God, let us do what Proverbs 3, verses 1 to 4, has told us to do. And the next scripture is Jeremiah 15, verse 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. So Jeremiah so got the word inside of him, his heart was full of rejoicing. We too can be filled with such joy when we allow God to indwell us and become part of us. So we fully digest it and we, be we begin to walk and walk out our lives as a living stone. And then Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. How important that is. We cannot live just by the written word of God, the bread of God, and the Bible describes Jesus as the bread of life, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So we have the word of God, scripture, the Bible, which is our anchor, gives us the answers to the basic questions in life, but then we have the prophetic words, and we have the words we can hear directly from the Holy Spirit. So as we hear God speak to us through the Holy Spirit, we can hear personally and we can hear through prophetic words given to us from others. But it, So it's not just the written word of God, the Bible, it's also us hearing through the Holy Spirit uh, him speak to us in that way. And finally, two little roundup scriptures for you, just reminding us of our position and the very truth of God. John 14, verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. I've always found this scripture very powerful, personally, that these very words, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then the next scripture, John 8, verses 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Two very important, important points here. First of all, it says, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. So if we don't follow and pursue all the teaching from the Word of God that we need to be following, 
then we aren't truly disciples of Jesus. But then it says, and here's the carrot, we had the stick, the stick is, you must do this to be a true disciple, and here's the carrot, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, don't you want to be free? Don't you want all truth? I do, and I'm sure you do. So, thank you for listening. That's today's mini teaching. God bless you. Have a lovely day. And remember, love never fails. <laughs>